I believe today we have one last day of doing business type stuff. And the last two weeks we will probably do as Q&As. You bring something craft-wise um, that you are interested in having me talk to you about, maybe something you're having trouble with your writing in a general term that you think would help others, and we'll talk about it, okay? So those are the next two weeks. <coughs> I will have stuff prepared to blab about if you don't bring questions, but I want those to be focused mostly Q&A if possible. All right? Let's run down the list of stuff left over from last week. One of them was movie deals, right? All right, what else was I going to talk about? Someone made a Platform list for me. Taxes, taxes yes. Queries. Query Queries, oh. Platforms. Yeah, platforms. Okay, was, that was the whole list. I got it all. All right, <clears throat> so very kind of nuts and bolts um, sort of stuff uh, this week. But this, this sort of thing is somewhat important. Um, it's very important. It's just good for you to know about. No one else is going to tell it to you. Um, let's start with platforms. Um, what I mean by a platform is this is basically the self-marketing lesson. Did you guys need chairs? There's a seat right here. Um, so self-marketing. From the beginning of time, basically every author has been forced to self-market. Um, it's become a bigger and bigger deal in recent years. The main reason for that is on the online ability. Um, in the 90s, early 90s, if you wanted to connect with readers, you basically had to travel to them. Now you don't have to anymore, but that kind of that offers you opportunities, but it also allows the publisher to shift some of the, more of the burden to you. Um, there are two basic ways to approach this. The first way is to say, I am going to do as little marketing as possible, and I'm going to write as many stories as possible. You take the opinion of a month spent um, doing online marketing or any other type of marketing is a month that I'm not writing, and I might as well have more things out there, either being purchased if you're self-publishing or with the potential of being bought by a publisher. So this is, this is you know, kind of just to take it, I don't like to, to self-market. Um, this is very rare, but it is, a, it is possible. Some people have the theory that this is just the way you should do it. Um, other people go the other way and say, um, what good does it do me if I write three books a year if no one reads any of them? I'd rather write one book a year and spend that other time really pushing that book to start making a name for myself and to drive people to pay attention to me. Um, you'll kind of have to decide where you want to be on this scale because you can do anything in between. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do for self-marketing. They are all of varying levels of, um, of value depending on how good you are at it. Uh, one of the main ones is blogging. Blogging. Um, there are a number of authors out there that what they do is they have a very, very um, good blog that is widely read and becomes a marketing tool for their books. Um, some authors that do this so that you can kind of watch and see. Uh, Scalzi is very good at this. Um, so is Joe Conrath. I think, what is that? Is that a C? Sorry, Joe, if I spelled your name wrong. Um, Corey Doctorow is quite good at this. Um, you'll, find, you'll find that there are a number of authors that, that do this. Um, the trick with this is the idea of the platform. People don't want to come to your blog to read about your books if, you have never, if they've never read your books. Okay. Now, blogging can be split into, you know, I generally blog for my readers. That's what my blog is for. My blog is a come and find out what's going on in Brandon's life. I'm popular enough that that's, that that's a good marketing tool for me. Um, it allows me to connect with my readers. It is not selling a lot of books. It's giving added value to the readers I already have. 
who then hopefully continue to read my books and are, and are interested in things like this. There, you can probably see how that's different, from, for instance, from Cory Doctorow. Cory Doctorow is one of the prime bloggers at Boing Boing, one of the biggest blogs on the internet. Um, the, he blogs about things such as, um, such as freedom of information. Um, he does technology. He talks about you know, cutting edge sort of pop culture things. And he writes very engagingly and interestingly about them, sometimes very controversially about them. His blog, then because the blogging is fascinating, or controversy, or whatever you want to call it, draws millions of readers. Then those blog people recognize his name, and he has a link to download his books as part of his blog. Um, a person who did this that you, might, um, that you might find interesting is Larry Correa. Larry Correa is a local author who self-published in the days before e-publishing came around. And Larry is a mega gun nut, OK? This guy, um, he is. He is really into his guns. He loves them. Um, and he started writing books for gun nuts, right? He read, uh, writes a series. His first series is called Monster Hunter in International. It's basically, imagine if you took Men in Black and combined it with gun fanatics. So they don't just kill monsters. They kill them with cool guns and talk about how cool their guns are, right? <laughs> um, so Larry became an expert in the platform of sort of gun rights and types of guns, and he tapped into this. He started um, being very um, vocal on various uh, blogs and forums where gun nuts hang out and talk about their guns. He, um, be he would gained a good reputation among them. That's important, the platform, good reputation, and good content. The idea is that you are shilling your book to them as an afterthought to the good reputation and good content. This is where a lot of online marketing new writers go wrong. They pop into a forum that they've never been on before, and then they say, hey, everybody, go read my book. Um, or they do a blog post about how awesome their book is. Nobody wants to read that. But if you do a blog post on how the new Glock is like totally inferior to the old Glock and it should change back, um, all the gun nuts are like, yeah, or no, you're wrong. And, but you do know your stuff. And by the way, you write these books. I'll probably like them because I like the sort of stuff you're talking about. Um, Larry made a platform for that. He, became, he, he took off really big. He eventually published with Bain, which is the perfect publisher for him. Gives him a lot of control, but also kind of has that same audience. Um, he eventually got, um, got made into, because his day job was an accountant, he got made into, I'm so envious, G.I. Joe's accountant. He appeared in a G.I. Joe comic book as Spreadsheet, the official G.I. <laughs> Joe accountant. He is a G.I. Joe character because the G.I. Joe um, writers, um, as you can imagine, are gun nuts. And so they like his books, they like him, and he's like a big guy that would fit in G.I. Joe. And so he is, Larry is now Spreadsheet, the G.I. Joe accountant. Um, what a call name. Yeah, I know. Isn't that perfect? It's like awesome. Um, so... But this is, this is what Larry did. You can talk to Larry about doing this. He did it perfectly for the platform sort of way that you're doing it. Good reputation, good content, and books that then tie into that content. And you can see how making a platform that way could be very effective. The problem is it takes a lot of time to do this. All right? Um, it takes a lot of time. Joe Conrath does this kind of as a self-publishing guru. Um, John Scalzi does this as a controversial blogger who writes interesting things about a lot of stuff. He was AOL's blogger back in the day, like their official blogger. That was his job before he became a writer. He started his own blog, wrote all sorts of cool things, blogged his novel as he was writing it, and an editor from Tor read the novel being blogged and contacted him and said, I want to buy this. Um, but, you know, Scalzi had hundreds of thousands of readers at that point because he was such a good writer blog-wise. This takes a lot of time. If you're naturally good at this, or if you naturally have a platform that's interesting to you that you want to write about that does tie to your books, then this is a method you can use. You don't have to do this. If you do it right, it can be a wonderful way to get attention. But a lot of people break into this and think, I have to be doing this. It is not the only way to go about doing it. If you've got good books, you will find ways to make people read them or coerce them to read them. Um, you don't need to do this, okay? Questions about any of this? Is this kind of the same thing with the YA world that like John Green and those other people were writing 
adults that have video blogs? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not as I'm not as in touch with the YA world on this as I am with the adult world, just because these are the circles I move in. Um, but from what I understand, like for instance, in children's YA, um, uh, book trailers are, are a bigger deal. In adult, no one watches them. In kids, lots of lots of teens watch them. The video blogs and things like that, things for kids to come do online at your at your website, is a, is usually a good idea.